Hi there, Matt Morley from Doors for Lane Real Estate here with Joa Emma. Um, the New South Wales government has recently um, made reforms around the tenancy situation and we've got some frequently asked questions. I'm going to ask the questions, Joe will answer. We've done a more detailed one um, to our landlords, but we thought we'd put another one out there for the general public. We're here to provide information at this difficult time. So Joe, welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, one of the first questions is, um, can a tenant and landlord still end a tenancy if they can agree? Yes, definitely. So as long as both parties agree, then a tenancy can be ended, um, whether it's you know still in a fixed term or not. It can yes. be ended. Yes. So it's just mutual agreement. Yep. And that's fine. Nothing's changed there. Nothing's really. changed there. Excellent. Um, what proof does a tenant need? Um, if they're affected by COVID-19 in terms of non-payment of rent? Sure, so to show that they've been impacted by COVID-19 yes. um, and are in a position of hardship, uh -huh. then the tenants will need to provide information around yes. their employment, being either terminated, stood down, uh -huh. um, hours lost, yep. um, proof of, that, of their government support, so whatever assistance the government is giving them, we need to see the proof of that okay. and what it amounts to, and obviously a prior income. So we need to see the, the before income yep. and the after income to ascertain whether they're in a position of hardship. Okay, does a tenant need to pay back if they are in hardship and they do get an agreement to reduce your rent? Do they have to pay back the, the rent that was diminished? Yeah, so I guess uh, at this stage, um, yeah, it, it's not, assume that once a rent is reduced or waived, that it doesn't have to be paid back. Um, the way that the reforms are, have been sort of delivered, yes. um, there, there are allowances for that amount of monies that are reduced or not paid at the uh -huh. time yeah. um, to be paid back. But then again, that does come down to negotiating between tenants and landlords, yeah. So a landlord could affect waive that? Yeah, definitely. If they decide to whether reduce the rent for a period or, or give the tenant a rebate or allow some free period, um, then whatever's agreed to. You know, some people are in a position are not in a position to sort of waive any rent, but are happy to sort of try and um, keep that tenancy going and yes. do that for a period, and then work out a payment plan down the track. So, you know, we've, we've, there's a number of different options that um, we've sort of. Um, put in place for our tenants Absolutely. and they not yet. Landlord insurance, yep. is that affected by this? Yeah. So look, I think everyone will need to speak to their individual insurers. Uh -huh. um, what we know from the land specialised landlord insurance companies that we deal with yeah. um, is that landlords are covered for rent default. Yes. So if your tenant defaults based on, regardless of what the reason is, yeah. then the landlord will be covered. What they're not covered for is any reduction in the rent. So if you make an agreement that the rent's going to be reduced or waived for a period, whatever that may be, you that's can't then go to the landlord insurance and ask for that money back. So yeah, that, that is a mutual agreement. agreement. Exactly, it's a mutual okay. agreement. But again, you know, individual owners will need to check, especially if they're with a bigger land um, insurance companies yeah. that don't specialise in landlord insurance, then every policy is different. So speak to your insurer. Yeah. Um, subtenants, it's an interesting one. If there's a subtenant, are they um, come, come under the same legislation on the stop of evictions? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I guess the, the, um, if you're a subtenant and you're yeah. nominated on the lease agreement, then the same rules apply. If you're okay. impacted by COVID-19, then it, you, you can't be evicted um, for a period, um, but obviously the same, same applies. The same criteria, you have to prove that you've you've lost your job, yep. that you can't pay your rent, and it will go into the, the whole house's calculation. 100%, so projects. it's looked at, at, every tenancy is looked at as a household, and depending on the number of occupants within that household, depending on what the income has been reduced for the whole household, yeah. Old, yeah. then that's when that, that impact on whether in hardship, it needs to be less than 25%, so they need to have lost 25% of the income sure. for the whole household okay. to, become a, a hard, to be in hardship. Okay, and then another question I've got noted here, can I still end my tenancy using the required notice periods and not negotiate with my landlord, so if I'm a tenant? So if you're a tenant and you're not impacted by COVID, so you haven't proven hardship, yeah. then the same notice um, periods apply. Okay. So again, you can give 21 days notice to end your, your lease agreement. Um, if you're on a fixed term agreement, then yeah, you can end it, but you will come under the break 
break lease terms. So you may, or you will have to pay sort of break lease fees and, and rent and things like that. And that's if you're not, okay. if you haven't shown that you're in a hardship situation. Okay. Great. Another one, why are we not protected from, from eviction for six months as was announced following the National Cabinet meeting. So that has changed to 60 days? Um, well, look, if you're not impacted by COVID-19, so you haven't, um, you're not in a position of hardship, yeah. then the, you've signed the lease agreement and all those um, terms and conditions apply. So you've still got to pay the rent, you've still got to give notice, same. If you are in a position of hardship, what yeah. the government has said is that there's a stop on termination notices for 60 days. So what they're saying is that if someone is in hardship, then they've got 60 days for the government assistance to come through yes. um, and negotiate with your landlord about getting you through that period. Okay. After that period, then if you're still in arrears, yes. then the landlord can look to terminate, but you, they won't, when I say they won't, I mean Fair Trading and NCAT yes. will not terminate an agreement. Yeah if there has not been a negotiation with the landlord. So if there's been um, no attempt to resolve that issue in the 60 days, they need to see that there's been some sort of um, attempt at resolving that situation. Otherwise, will they get involved with the resolution? Yeah, definitely. Fair trading um, yeah. are set up um, to provide um, help, assistance to both landlords and tenants. And, and they will sort of, if a tenant brings into fair trading, they will get the tenant situation and then they will make the call to the landlord and say, hey, your tenant is in this situation, what is your situation? And then they'll look at both parties and yeah. they will try to broker a deal there. Okay, so the next question is what if the landlord refuses to negotiate and we can't reach an agreement, then it goes to the... It. If fair trading gets involved and then if fair trading can't resolve it, okay. it will then still go to tribunal. So okay. it, it's a, I guess the process is, is similar to what we've got in normal circumstances, except they want to see that there's been um, an attempt at resolving you know, any potential issues that are there. What about group houses? Yeah, much the same as your shared um, situations. If one tenant is has lost income, yeah. but it hasn't reduced the, whole. That in, the household income by 25%, yeah. Yeah. the rent is still due and payable, but you know, that, that single tenant cannot yeah. be evicted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I'm a landlord, but I can't afford to provide a reduction, so I've got big costs, you know, land tax, uh, you know, levies, big mortgage. You know. And, and, there is, and there's a lot of landlords um, in that situation as well. Um, and as well, there's you know landlords that don't have mortgages but are retired and live off the income from an investment that may have. So they don't get a pension and they're not, they don't have that assistance from the government either. So well, I guess what, what um, the government is saying that if you've got a mortgage, yes. that you try and speak to your financial institution uh, about what you can do about that situation. We know that that comes with a cost, yeah. um, but if that's your only option, yes. then it's an option that you know you right. need to cover off. But look uh, again, you know that's the thing. You may be a landlord, but you may have also lost your employment. Your hours may have also been reduced. Yes. Um, I guess the disappointing thing around you know the reforms that were passed for both tenants and landlords is that there wasn't. I think we expected a little bit more in the sense of assistance. Um, which hasn't been forthcoming. Yes. From what I can gather, I think the government feels that they've done enough with the other assistance packages yes, through they have. employment yes. and whatnot yeah. that hopefully people are going to be in a, in a position where that up. can get through. Yeah, yeah. that can cut that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, one of the last ones here, sure. what happens once the interim 60 day stop yeah. ends? That's one of the questions we'll see again. So once the 60 days ends, then yeah. potentially a landlord can, if there's still arrears, um, and there's no plan in place for those arrears to be paid off, they can then look to terminate the, okay. the, the agreement sort of thing. Yeah. But again, you know, for an agreement to be terminated um, for, for a tenancy that has been impacted by COVID-19, um, there needs to be proof that both parties have sort of tried to resolve it. Yeah. Okay, great. Joe, that pretty much ends a lot of the frequently asked questions. There's probably a lot more that people will be asking as time marches on. If you've got any questions about the rental side, speak to Joe, he can handle anything that you need. In terms of other areas of the business, we're always here to help. So thanks for watching, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Thank Joe. You. Awesome. Cheers.